Hello everyone, we're back again with another critique video. Today on the channel we have Dr. Mike Isretail from Renaissance Periodization. Basically, the title of this video is called The Downsides of the Carnivore Diet Are Huge, so that's his opinion. And we're going to get into why he holds that opinion. We're just going to jump directly into this video. I mean, I've tried a bunch of different diets, but for me, there's a lot of benefits to this carnivore diet. So the carnivore diet's kind of a trip. Some people here and there will find the diet does two things for them. One is it radically improves all of their blood work markers of health and longevity. Two is- Um, no, sorry. Uh, when it comes to blood markers, they have no bearing on whether you are going to live longer or live more healthy. Okay, Mike, that's not how that works. Presentation is what matters, not blood markers. A lot of them, most of them are arbitrary cutoffs based on normative levels of the population, that population being deranged heavily especially when it comes to cholesterol levels. Um, those have no bearing on one's risk of heart disease whatsoever, actually. So, okay. Um, anyway, if that's what people are stating as, as a positive, well, I would argue with them as to whether that's a positive or not. Because I don't think that's a positive. Let's look at how you feel. I really like it. And for those folks, carnivore or at least... Okay, so basically, you completely, purposely just ignored the main reasons why people continue a carnivore diet, embark upon one, and the main benefits that are actually experienced on a carnivore diet. So you just completely ignored that, and it was on purpose, because there's no way that you were actually able to ignore it based upon a lack of seeing, a lack of observation of these anecdotes. You have seen them, and you chose to ignore them. So let me instead actually tell people the real reasons why people embark upon or not even why they embark upon a carnivore diet because the main reason for that is chronic illness to some degree but the main reason they stick with it um it ameliorates diabetes extremely effectively it is a very very good weight loss diet but in reality it is not a weight loss diet it is a body composition optimi optimizing diet that is what that is Okay, because it doesn't just cause people to lose weight. It causes people to increase their muscle mass and lose fat and water. So they, they optimize their body composition. Their performance in the gym is extremely optimized because of blood sugar regulation, ostensibly, it seems. Okay. And also because of the repletion of nutrition from their meat and other carnivorous foods that they're consuming. It is the most effective diet at ameliorating conditions such as, I don't know, eczema and a lot of very arcane skin conditions and other autoimmune conditions that are deemed to be incurable. Okay. Um, it lowers blood pressure, it seems, with most people. That's what they report. I can keep going. Why didn't you mention any of those? It's not because people like it, and also it improves their blood work. That's stupid and ridiculous, and actually you know that, Mike. So, anyway. But, by the way, since Mike has muscle, I'm wrong. Since he has more muscle than most people, then he's right. So just understand that. And also, since he was actually administered credence by an institution, those institutions being rapacious and misanthropic and fraudulent in many cases and bought and paid for, um, then he also is therefore more knowledgeable on this subject, despite the fact that other people with his same credentials, by the way, have said exact opposite things to his opinions. So, interesting. ...of carnivore, where you get some extra fiber and some vitamins and minerals and maybe some mixed... Why would you want um, extra fiber? Okay, because actually extra fiber is anything more than zero grams because not only is it unnecessary, it's actually a contraindication in the human diet from every inference that we have. Did you know that, Mike? Fiber causes microabrasions in the gut lining, which increases mucus secretion as a result of immune dysregulation that occurs subsequently. There are only two associations or associative factors between diverticulosis, uh, which trends towards diverticulitis, which is an outpouching or breaking down of the distal colon, which can lead to infection and early death if left untreated, and it absolutely does, and that's increased fiber intake and increased bowel motions per day, the former usually causing the latter. General surgeons put patients with diverticulitis or diverticulosis on a low residue diet in order to, quote, rest the bowel. People with colonostomy bags only have plant fiber stuck in them, not any meat 
or animal product material. Fiber is what gets stuck in your digestive tract. It is what actually rots, in other words, ferments to be technical in your colon and in the small intestine, creating lots of other byproducts that are unnecessary and possibly damaging, as well as completely trivial short-chain fatty acids, considering the fact that you yield all of the short-chain fatty acids that, you know, are deemed to be beneficial from the result of the fermentation of fiber from being in systemic ketosis and therefore having a low insulin and an absence of carbohydrate consumption. Therefore, there's only been one study published in the World Journal of Gastroenterology in 2012 that even remotely attempted to control for confounding variables. There's a signal to noise ratio error there, uh, just say the same errors that are in every other study, um, but it was the most scientific that you're going to get because it was the only study that once again attempted to control for confounding variables, where a group of around 70 people presented with idiopathic constipation, idiopathic meaning they don't know the cause of it. They were split into three groups. One group was told to maintain their fiber intake. The second group was told to slightly reduce it, whatever the hell that means. And the third group was told to completely eliminate it. And the only group that saw a invariable decrease and amelioration, complete amelioration in all of their symptoms of constipation, including anal bleeding, bloating, and, um, well, of course, blockage, was the group that eliminated or at least reported to have eliminated their fiber intake. The ones that maintained their fiber intake had a bowel motion of once per one per 6.83 days, actually. It seems to exacerbate constipation. There's no requirement for it. It seems to cause, uh, it does cause microabrasions to the gut lining. Not necessary for short-chain fatty acid production. We have an appendix for a reason, Mike. So no. Mixed greens. Nope, oxalates, also not required for the human diet as well. And really when I say oxalates, I should say oxalic acid because then whenever you consume them, they form oxalates uh, given the pH of the fluid in which they are introduced. And then they form raphides, which are small crystalline structures smaller than your cell membranes and therefore obliterate them upon impact. So no, no requirement for oxalates, no requirement for the vitamin, vitamins and mixed greens. There's vitamins in your meat. So just stop with that. That's ridiculous, because um, that's the thing that you just said before. You said vitamins and minerals. Yeah, well, there's vitamins and minerals in your meat. In fact, all of the ones that you require, far less than what would be, what's colloquially deemed sufficient. But obviously, people aren't dying of nutrient deficiencies on a carnivorous diet. So that completely undermines that theory. If you're to look at a prospective cohort study or to, or to perform one on carnivore populations and then establish presentable symptoms of vitamin deficiency, not inferred from normative levels because those are based on a population that is heavily deranged, so no, those don't apply. Paradigm shift is required here and is necessary. You will most likely find an absence of that or an extremely low prevalence. And when you look in the people that actually may present with a you know, true bona fide vitamin deficiency or a few, you may find that their carnivorous diet is not properly tenured or properly fortified. Anyway, covered everything, I think. Can really be a pretty long-term, pretty sustainable diet that's super healthy and works well. The no, that's your opinion. When it comes to being healthy, that's your opinion. There are no studies to actually inform upon whether something is healthy or not at all in the area of human nutrition science because it's based upon standard inferential statistics, and standard inferential statistics makes no claims about causality. Without additional machinery, i.e. causal inference, you cannot do such a thing. It's often espoused, it's, it's invariably actually espoused um, in conclusions of said papers to be able to establish causality, but it cannot and does not and never will. So no, that's your opinion. And it's based upon erroneousness and fallaciousness. Um, in terms of sustainability, the carnivore diet is sustainable as well. That's also your opinion that it's not sustainable. Have you ever tried it? The majority of people will start the carnivore diet and get so goddamn sick of eating only meat, they'll just fall off the wagon. It's an insane. Okay, so actually, that is not true at all. That's what you have experienced in your echo chamber on social media. Okay, so no, false. Not true. Most people do not get sick of only eating meat. And also, if they did get sick of only eating meat, did you know that there are other carnivore foods that are not meat? Okay. Who said that you only have to eat meat on a carnivore diet? Extremely restrictive diet. I don't have to tell you that. It's one of the. Well, it's again, that's another opinion. And also, if your sole source of enjoyment or one of your main sources of enjoyment is from food, you should have a serious look at your life. I'm not saying that you shouldn't enjoy your food, but ask any carnivore if they enjoy their food or not, and they do. 
And if they get sick and tired of eating ground beef, like I just did recently, and that never happens, I made my ground beef into burgers. Then they taste it even better. There's a lot of ways that you can adapt. See, Mike, I would venture to guess that you've never been critically ill and sick. And also, I still, of course, believe, since every single person that I'm talking to right now is a human being, um, that even if you have not been chronically ill, um, you should adopt such a diet because it is a species-appropriate, species-specific diet for our physiology as a human race. Um, and you should learn how to seek happiness or enjoyment in other areas of your life besides food. That is what I would recommend. And also, once again, it is really easy to spice things up in the kitchen, okay? And I actually mean that literally to uh, to an extent. Okay, so so just just anyway, this is all your opinion. To possible restrictive diets, because it only lets you eat one food group, meat. That's it, motherfucker. That's good. Nope, that's not true. False, absolute false claim, right there, Mike. Does not make you only eat meat whatsoever. And also, there are different forms of meat. Okay, so just because, you know, red meat is what we prioritize and what you should prioritize doesn't mean that once a week you can't have fish or seafood, and there's many different forms of seafood. If you're shellfish allergic, well, then pork is fine as well, in moderation. Whatever the hell that means, to be fair. Um, once a week is, is, is probably okay, in my opinion. Um, chicken, poultry, okay? There's different parts of chicken as well. There's different ways to make chicken. Okay, there's a lot of variety. You just have to try. You don't have any gumption to try it. You don't have any desire to try it, so you're not going to do it. But anyway, it just makes your opinion less valuable. Because here's the thing. Just because you hold an opinion does not mean it holds the same value as the next person's that holds a different opinion. Not all opinions are equal. My generation has grown up to believe that. Um, which is why they're all arrogant, ignorant, and lazy. And, and, and honestly, just sordid, squalid people. But anyway... What you eating for meal two today? Oh, it's meat again, isn't it? What about meal three? Meat well, no one eats three meals a day on a carnivore diet. Try and eat that much food. It's usually one meal a day, as it should be, actually, because every single time you eat, no matter what food it is, you actually do induce inflammation. It seems to be an evolutionary adaptation to food because of the fact that we never knew which food um, that we serendipitously encountered or the next food that we serendipitously encountered would kill us or not upon consumption, whether it was due to rotten meat being found, or whether it was due to the fact that it was a plant, because 99% of plants that you find in the wild will kill you. Have you ever thought about the fact that if you go into the wild right now, and you try to subsist off of food around you, you'd only be able to eat meat? Because you wouldn't risk eating a plant? Because they're lethal and toxic? Something to think about. Most people just can't sustain the diet, and- No, that's not true. That's your opinion. That's your perspective based on your echo chamber that you've lived in for a while. Fractions of people. Eating a relatively balanced diet? Oh. A balanced diet is not what you should be eating. What's the requirement for balance in the human diet? And what degree do you need balance in your human diet to subserve the life of you, basically? In fact, actually, can you tell me one animal that has a balanced diet and eats one? Okay, because even herbivores usually have a select few plants that they consume. I believe that koalas only eat about two plants. Okay, and if they eat others, they'll die. Because plants are toxic, actually. They're biochemical engineers. In fact, if you talk about balance, that re that necessarily means that you are in, you are encouraging people to consume a relatively significant amount of carbohydrates and fats in their meal together. Look into the Randall cycle, Mike. How about you just binge my channel and watch the, watch the videos about the Randall cycle? Or you can check out my video with uh, Professor Bart K that I did recently on the Randall cycle. He did most of the explaining on that, and it's a pretty good explanation. But you can go ahead and do that. Anyway, continue. Lean meats, which is dope. Veggies. Okay, so lean meat. Why lean meat? We're not designed to eat lean meat. We're designed to eat fatty meat because fat is our, you know, inner, is our fuel source that has been our fuel source, rather, is what I should say, for four and a half million years if you include protohumans that preceded our current speciation, that being Homo sapiens sapien. Even if you include our current speciation, that's around 350,000. We've been eating fat as our primary fuel source for energy creation within the body for hundreds of thousands of years. Our genes have evolved under that stimulus to derive our effective ATP synthesis activity from the energy derived from fatty acid oxidation, actually, in the mitochondria, Mike. So, ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. Veggies and fruits, not only are they not required for human physiology, they're actually contraindicated. In the, course, in, in the case of veggies, or vegetables, um, 
which is by the way a culinary term. They were never called vegetables before. They were actually called herbs but due to their due to their size. That's actually evinced in the Bible, a historical text where they referred to vegetables as fruit, uh, as as herbs. By the way, um and then really what we're saying is plants, vegetables, once again, another, it's, it's a culinary term, and there are anti-nutrients in them, and really that's the colloquial term for plant toxins. You've got oxalic acid, you've got, you've got phytic acid, you've got lectins in them, you've got glucosinolates, you've got polyphenols, you've got, I don't know, salicylic acid. It's all problematic, and, you know, it affects people differently than others, but they're not required. And therefore, even if you, and also if you can't feel the effects after you eat said vegetables, that doesn't mean they're not affecting you. Gluten is a lectin, for example, and many people have gluten intolerance. Well, you probably have other lectin intolerances as well. Fruits, well, not only do they contain some extant plant toxins that I was just talking about, they also contain an exorbitant amount of sugar in the form of sucrose, fructose, glucose, and some sorbitol in them, which is a sugar alcohol that causes your cells to burst because of its osmotic force. Um, and those will cause glycation damage, which is simply the covalent binding of those molecules to proteins in the body, uh, which either, which basically renders them ineffective, uh, rend it results in a failure of operation of those proteins. Um, and yeah, you've also got fiber in the fruits and I just covered fiber and you've also got deuterium in both of these things, uh, but especially fruits, which will slow the rate at which your mitochondria function, which will cause inflammation. So anyway, next whole grains and healthy fats. Okay, so healthy fats is an opinion, right? Whole grains is also extremely contraindicated or are extremely contraindicated, so false. You just It's basically just all the same normal propaganda that you were taught in school, okay? But since you have muscle, what you're going to do is you're going to be like, well, I'm fine. And also, I don't have any symptoms of this and that. Maybe, perhaps, at least that you can think of. Um, and, uh, well, it works for you, it works for you. Anyway, Mike, um, yep, you can build muscle by having a diet like that as long as you get sufficient amino acid content that is bioavailable. So lean meats will have bioavailable amino acids. That's literally the only thing that is required to build muscle. And then all, also some other nutrients like potassium, for example, fine, whatever, that you can also get from those foods. But you're getting a lot of other things that are contraindicated, insalubrious, and just completely deleterious above a physiological concentration within the bloodstream. So, yeah, I wouldn't encourage anyone that listens to Mike Isretail, um, perhaps listen to him about training. I'm, that's not my specialty, but do not listen to him about diet because he clearly doesn't know what he's talking about. And it's demonstrated within this video. Will be the best way to health, both in their blood work and in how they like it and consistent. Well, we just covered blood work and also um, liking something does not mean that it's indicated and also sustaining something or being able to sustain something more regularly um, is not, first of all, uh, a criterion of indication with respect to diet or any lifestyle behavior, but it is also um, something that actually can be achieved on a carnivorous diet that is properly tenured, properly fortified. Absolutely. You've just never tried it, and you don't talk to people that have tried it. You talk in a crowd that basically just denigrates it and disparages it because they are meatheads. And please, Mike, you try and come off as this person that is not a meathead. But in reality, um, it seems to be the case that you are from what I've seen. Okay, so I encourage you to not be that person because you clearly have the intellect to not be that person. You had a conversation with Chris Williamson, for example. Um, but anyway... So, yeah, we covered blood work, we covered sustainability, and also it's your opinion that it's the healthiest diet. It's probably the best diet uh, to go on. Well, that's your opinion, and it's based upon erroneousness and fallaciousness and propaganda. And enjoy it and makes them feel better. Okay, so when it comes to making people feel better, uh, that's usually a good thing. Yes, obviously, of course. Um, it seems to be the case that carnivore, a carnivore diet that is once again properly tenured and properly fortified is the absolute most conducive approach to making people feel better metabolically, and all that good stuff, basically. And also, once again, with the enjoyment thing. Just because you enjoy something like heroin, for example, doesn't mean that it's indicated. All right, covered it. That was pretty easy. So if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. Please subscribe to the channel. Please leave your thoughts in the comment section below. And also subscribe to the Patreon if you haven't already to gain access to one week early uploads, ad-free content, uncensored content, and one extra video per week. And also buy my book, Contraindicated, a closer look and revision of mainstream health axioms that have perpetuated illness, disorder, and disease for over a century if you have not bought that book already. And the link at the bottom of the screen, what is that link? Well, that is a link that will bring you to an amazing site with amazing products from an amazing brand known as Cerule. If you purchase product through that link, 
link you will gain access to a permanent 10% discount and permanent free shipping when signing up for monthly deliveries. That's the important part. And also if you email me at edgookie14 at gmail.com behind the scenes, I can tell you how to earn those products for free because who in their right mind wouldn't want that? And of course I wouldn't tell you or recommend that you buy anything without learning about it. So I've linked a video in the top right corner of the screen, that being a video entitled Cerule Products, which is a video elucidation and explanation of what those products are, who should take them, why you should take them, when to take them, etc., etc. And I would also further migrate to the description below to find a video between myself and Professor Bart K on these products in further detail, as well as the company of Cerule itself, which I believe is extremely important so you know where your money is going. And if you are someone that would not like to contribute recurring payments to my channel in the form of either a Patreon subscription or a monthly shipment with Cerule, I have made available a donation link with GoFundMe in the description below for one-time donations if you felt the desire to contribute such a thing. And finally, once again, email me at edgoki14 at gmail.com if you have any questions regarding anything at all, and I will try my best to answer those. With that being said, join me next time when someone else basically denigrates the carnivore diet that really is extremely unfamiliar with it, has no idea what it's about, and is extremely ignorant with respect to the people that adopt it and their experiences. So, till then.